Basically, uh, if today you were to uh, own IP rights in Singapore, and uh, let's say you start off with IP rights, uh, probably you, your initial cost is around 10,000 USD. Maybe three years down the road, when you sold for maybe 20 million, probably this 20 million gains is not taxable in Singapore. And another takeaway in Singapore basically is dividend is uh, net after tax. So basically, whenever you make a profit, you pay up your taxes, you declare a dividend, you didn't have to pay any taxes uh, for your dividends and even your capital gains. And, and, and in this scenario, if a founder actually makes an exit, uh, when I say an exit, by of course selling my stake off to either an investor or maybe an exit uh, in terms of an acquisition, right? Uh, in Singapore, I'm saying, um, you're saying that that I don't get charged the capital gains tax. Am yes, right? uh, basically there's no capital gain tax uh, in Singapore. I think one of the well-known uh, global investors would be Facebook co-founder uh, Ecuador. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. Basically, he was a US citizen and he shipped his citizenship to Singapore and due to the tax reason, and the US government can't do anything to him also. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's a, he's, a, he's a Singaporean citizen? Yes, he's a Singaporean citizen, and the Singapore government definitely welcomed him. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any, any questions on, on taxation as far as Singapore is I, I have the same question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Should we should we give the number the, on the forum? No, he's saying just just a rough sort of range. I I would say uh, less than uh, one lakh Indian rupee to 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 set up the business. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I think we have time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I'm just going to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you know there's 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 it, it, it includes the co corporate uh, company secretary services. It, it includes the uh, re registered office. I mean, okay, we are providing uh, secretaries to act uh, for you and also maintaining the meeting So this is, this is similar to the ROC filing in India. Okay. It is not purely secretary, it is like ROC filing in India, wherein in Singapore you need to have a registered company secretary attached to your uh, company, very similar to where in India we have the auditors. In, in, in Singapore, uh, so I think in Singapore, the audit is mandatory only when you touch 10 million. Yes, 10 million. So 10 million Singapore dollars, then only a, a company needs to get audited unless and until uh, the shareholders are corporates. When, when, so so that, that that is the difference between Indian taxation and the Singapore taxation, where in India every private limited company is required to get an audit report every year. So instead of that, there they have the secretary, company secretary, wherein every every company needs to have an attached company secretary there, uh, and and you you can also uh, talk about GST. As far as GST is concerned, I think one million. Yes, one million. So uh, once you reach one million Singapore dollar only, then you need to register under GST in Singapore, and uh, there is only one uh, slab in Singapore for GST, and that is seven percent. Seven percent. Yeah, seven percent is the, is the GST rate in Singapore. Maybe just a point to know, maybe to lower your business cost in investing in Singapore, you can also actually uh, voluntarily register for GST. Just that uh, you have to comply with a certain number of years as a GST registered trader. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, whatever the initial cost you are saying one lakh. Uh, does it include like even filing the taxes and everything? Yeah. Uh, this includes the basic uh, filings which we do, See, the ATMs, and but not tax. <laughs> so the thing is, uh, uh, that's the reason I said that we can take it offline because it would depend from business to business. No, no. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm asking a very generic question. Uh -huh. Anybody like uh, from India would be treated as a non-resident Singapore. Yeah. 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 And then he also needs to file the taxes over there. No, so he doesn't need to file his personal taxes. It's only the taxation of the company. Personal taxation needs to be filed only when he has got his income. And that income is, for example, you start taking salary from that company. You start uh, uh, earning income in your personal file as an individual. Most of us would actually do that, right? Okay, maybe for a start, I would rather say that instead of uh, Let's say start a company in Singapore and you are also acting as a director or a non-resident director. 
Hence, uh, basically, if you do not draw any director fees, you don't have to pay any personal income tax. But if you draw a X amount of uh, director fees, then you are liable to pay income tax to the tax authority. And however, I would say that to lower your tax bill earlier on, it is best to draw a dividend as a shareholder than rather than drawing any director fees or salary because end of this, the tax is tax free as a dividend. And just just to add, see, uh, as an individual, you pay taxes based on your residency. So uh, globally, you you will be taxed globally. So if if a resident of India, irrespective of whether you have income from US, Singapore, anywhere, your taxes will be consolidated in India and you file return. So if you have paid in taxes in Singapore also, you will get a credit in India. Yeah, so you will get a credit in India, either in terms of under the income tax provision or under the DTA treaty between India and Singapore. And one, one question would be that, suppose uh, we want to do a capital investment in that company, uh, so how does it work from India to Singapore company? Uh, I will answer this. Uh, this is a little specific, but I will answer this because there are the multiple options. Under 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 taxation, you do not have one plus one equal to two. There can be loan from from Indian entity to that entity. There there can be investments. There can be equity. There can be service agreements. So there there can be many ways, and it depends on what we want and uh, on what basis we take that call. But there are ways wherein we actually take money to, to Singapore. But it all it all depends. So now let's be specific if, if you want to. So it all depends which is your mother entity or do you really want to have an entity in India also? And what function those entities are doing? What assets those entities are employing? We, based on those things, we decide whether which entity is mother entity and from where you want to actually take money and for what purpose. Within each countries, right. and 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 would they would they apply to, to 
in general to any kind of business? Uh, in generally, uh, it applies to commodities, it applies to uh, the things that you are trading. Uh, one example is mentioned is gold. Yeah. So uh, the others are like livestock. Okay. Uh, and if I recall correctly, uh, mineral oils like uh, say uh, iron and coal, okay. uh, which uh, I don't think Singapore is importing or exporting very very very, very uh, frequent. But the one the, the one that's more frequent is uh, normally coal. Gold. Gold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but none, none of that actually applies to the people here. Right? We we don't take ventures largely, right? So. So, um, so, so, so do these FTS still hold value for us? 